Hello, hello, hello. Welcome everyone to a Vampire Survivors Weekend Spectacular vlog thing. Um, we are hopefully going to finish up Garlic Paradise here. Um, if we look at progress, beat 3000 Molisini Mol uh, in retirement. And that is all we have left. So. We will go do that right now with Poe. We're, we're running this all with Poe. I think I played like once with them. Um, then I was like, no, no, this is his his thing. Let's let's go with Poe. Drink some water here. <sighs> My throat's a little a little sore. I don't know how else to describe it. All right, do I just start with Wicked Season? I don't know, um, probably beginnings going. Do I want Tragic Princess? That could be, that could be an interesting thing to do. Okay, yeah, Tragic Princess is definitely what I want. But I also wanted that that uh, the rune tracer. But I think I think I have a limited number of weapons, so I should get rune tracer. I should have grabbed the wings because those would be really helpful. Because um, the faster I move, the more I can run through, the faster I can kill. Um, Candelabra would be really, really good to have as well. I think if I get the whips and Rune Tracer, I'll be in good shape. Let's go ahead and grab Candelabra. It's going to be good for me. Um, which also a good thing I... Maybe a good thing I didn't grab uh, Wicked Season because I'm not sure Wicked Season increases the frequency that the enemies show up. All right, I want to hold out for Wings and Root Tracer. Um, but I might just get stuck with the thing where I have to take something. And that would that would not be fun. I feel like really pumping it into Candelabra will be good. I'm already like a thousand enemies in, I'm almost at two thousand. Although I don't know if the individual plants are what I'm trying to destroy or what I'm not positive on that actually. Um, I want Rune Tracer so we'll leave the garlic there for now. Um, yeah so I was talking yesterday about films and foreign language films that sort of oh, see there it is. The one that gets me stuck with like something I don't want. All right, I guess Ebony Wings. I'd, I'd rather have Rune Tracer. Um, but I, I I was talking about Old Boy, and then I got into watching the the fan theory that that Snowpiercer is a Willy Wonka film in a way, and. The, the guy admits, like, this is this is just me having fun, like, there, it seems like there's something there, there's nothing really there, it's not a, a, it's not a Willy Wonka movie, it's just a bit kind of tongue-in-cheek that you can make funny, weird, silly little connections that do, does make sense. Anyway, 
that that's a pretty roundabout way of saying like I was watching that and that made me interested in watching Snowpiercer because I've actually never watched the Snowpiercer movie but I was interested in watching uh, Bong Joon Ho's movies. I I knew of you know Parasite when he won the Academy Award. I watched that one. It's a great, amazing movie. Um, and so that led me down the path of watching his his movies. I started. And it went in chronological order. I went with Barking Dogs Never Bite, um, and then Memories of Murder. Let's see, I'm trying to think. Mother, and then the other one I couldn't find. The o Okaihu or, or whatever it is. Um, but I think that's like a Netflix film. Anyway. That's a that's a really roundabout way of saying like, man, memories of murder and mother, those were so good. Those were amazing. I was I was floored at how good those movies were. They were definitely up there with um, Parasite. Like those are definitely like three of the best movies. I've, some of the best movies I've ever seen. Um, I can't speak about the other ones I haven't seen. I thought Snowpiercer was really, really well done. I think that could have been a big movie here in America. I don't think there was an appetite to really give it its best go. Like, And part of that might have to do a little bit with... Um, I think that was uh, what? What's his name? The the really horrible person in Hollywood that was like the center of the Me Too movement. Um, I think he was kind of in charge of whether that got shown in movie theaters, and I don't think he had the appetite appetite for it, and so it didn't really get the attention and advertising budget that it probably should have had and deserved um, other than it was probably seen as this Korean foreign film I, I personally thought it was an amazing film I think I think it could have been a good summer blockbuster hit um, I think it's I don't know the original source material. I've never actually read Snowpiercer, but I think Bong Joon Ho definitely took care in his treatment of the property of Snowpiercer. You know, um, adaptations always one of those weird and tricky things when you're taking a book and adapting it to a, a movie. Um, and that's what I was talking about with Sphere. Like, I know, this this is just such a huge tangent. Um, I'm, this tangent's so big for Sphere that I've gone from yesterday into today. Um, that I, there are, are some places or some that treat the source material with love and care and then others that treat the source material like a thinly veiled way of like this is just a vehicle for what we want to do you know I think the good examples of that are the Lord of the Rings movies and the Hobbit movies. Like, Lord of the Rings had pre-production for years, and Peter Jackson just crafted this beautiful, loving masterpiece to the Lord of the Rings. And 
and then the Hobbit was like this big steaming pile of shit. Which, understandably, I know Peter Jackson was attached to the film. It's not his fault. They didn't give him the same level of pre-production, the same level of budget, uh, the same level of planning. They, the studio had certain demands for what the number of films they wanted versus what you could realistically get out of The Hobbit. You know, I think it was a real mistake to make it three movies. I think it could have been done two movies, honestly. I think the first half would have taken you up to the Wood Elves and being captured, and then the second half of the movie could have been, you know, them going to the mountain and smog and the, the, the great battle and all that. So I think... I think it could have been done in two. I, I and some of my friends are like, "Oh, they could have done in one." I think it would have been difficult to do in one. I think things would have been left on the cutting room floor and not have been as concise of a story. I think if. If you have two movies, you allow for a bit of space. You add for a bit of breathing room in the movie. You allow for the movie to to stand on its own. You know, I think if you try to make it one movie, you're making it... You're going to make a really tight film. There won't be any breath. It'll be like scene after scene after scene, like cut after cut after cut, high pace. Whereas if you make it two movies, you allow for them to sit. You allow the camera to linger on a scene. That's this maybe big, huge expanse of wilderness and, and let the viewer really know and understand the beauty of this world and and what the adventure about to happen or is that that is going to happen. You know, so I think I think there's something set to be said for not cramming it all into one. You know, I think that would be the compromise everyone's happy with. I I almost would like them to take another crack at the Hobbit movies, like pretend like the their first round doesn't exist and and just give it another solid go. Because it's 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 really almost kind of disappointing what we got versus what we could have could have had, you know. Um, what do I want? Let's do spinach. Try to try to get a little stronger overall. Um, Because I don't... It's it's weird because it's a high fantasy movie. Is it an action movie? Do you market it as an action movie? Do you market it as a family-friendly movie? And frankly, I don't know the answer for that, truly. Man, I just, I just really do think how good Lord of the Rings is. Lord of the Rings was just such a high point and such a, such a masterpiece that it's disappointing what they did with The Hobbit. I know, I know that it was just an opportunity to, to cash in. I know that's what they wanted to do. They just wanted to cash in on Lord of the Rings. And I think they did ultimately the franchise as a larger whole a disservice. I've never watched power, you know, Rings of Power. I'm not going to get into that fucking minefield of discussion because I know I know people say really shitty things about it. I and I don't I think some of 
what people say might be warranted, and I think some of what people say isn't warranted. Um, but that's also my impression of someone who's never seen it. I just know people tend to bad wagon. One person says they don't like it, and then suddenly like 200 people have to say they don't like it to prove their loyalty to this person or to these critics. Um, when it's like, well, you didn't watch it, you're just going with what someone told you to say or think about it. Which is why I'm, I'm reserving judgment. I, based on what I've heard, and if I had to give my honest opinion, I think it does some things right and it does some things wrong. That's probably the truth and honesty of the situation. I'm not going to condemn it. I'm not going to say, oh, it's this bad, terrible, horrible movie or TV series. I I give them credit for, for doing something. You know, maybe, maybe it's they should have just tried to do a movie based or a series based in Lord of the Rings world, but like completely detached to from Tolkien's characters and motives and things like like, what if we had, like, just, a uh, like, a day-to-day -day sitcom of, uh, what do I have here? Uh, horrible. Horrible choice of someone. Wicked season. Um, like, what if I just had, like, a campy little sitcom of hobbits living in Hobbiton and, like, their day-to-day -day life and... You know, comings and goings of travelers in the Shire, and and them getting to into silly, funny situations and hijinks. Like, would that be terrible? I'd watch that. That sounds like fun. And I think maybe I I don't know too much about the Rings of Power, but maybe maybe they just lack a bit of fun, like. I think that's what makes the Lord of the Rings movies so great and good is I don't think they take themselves as seriously as probably some people wish they do or did. Like I think they're just a genuinely fun movie. You know, there are light hearted moments. They are there's bit of fun. You know, I think, like, the Hobbit movies over-relied on CGI. Really over-relied relied on, like, hey, let's give all these side stories that are happening in parallel to The Hobbit. Like, I know those stories are there. They exist in other books and in the background writing that, that um, Tolkien did for Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. But, like... It's also not necessary you give the, all, all that to us. It's just not. Like, it does, didn't add, add a great deal. It didn't add a ton to the experience. Um, where I think if they focus on making a tighter, concise movie for The Hobbit, I think it, it could be up there with the same praise that people talk about Lord of the Rings, but now it never will be it can't it it just won't because they had their shot and they blew it you know they had a real chance to give people something wonderful and amazing and they didn't they just dropped the ball they they really really did not I, I honestly don't know how they they like watched those movies and was like, yeah, this is good. I watched the first one in theaters for The Hobbit and I have not bothered to watch any of the other movies or... And I, I just felt like I was not enthused about going and seeing them in theaters. Like when I heard that they like turned what was like supposed to be originally 
one or two films into three, I'm like, hmm, that's a mistake. Because I was like, where are they getting material for that? Like, are they adding a bunch of stuff? And yes, they just added a bunch of stuff that is not necessary and doesn't add to the movie. You know, that being said, there are, there are some things that were left out of Lord of the Rings. Like, I kind of now think about and like how much I love the Tom Bombadil part of the book. But I also get why that would likely get cut from the movie. Because it is a little aside. Uh, and, and when you have so much time, it probably is a section that's a little bit easier to cut out of, of the movie. It's just a shame. Is this really loud? No, it's not too bad. Like, I'm looking at the music mixer. It's going a little higher than I normally like it. But it also doesn't sound too super loud to me in my headphones. And I have my headphones set to what I normally have it. So hopefully it's not too loud. I'll have to listen to the mixing. Which, I need to figure out how I can record my mic on one track in the game on, the s on another track so I can like mix those sound inputs separately in video editing because that would that would make my life a little easier if I think oh there we go I think that concludes yo I can now ascend the adventure oh see that was something I was not expecting Base game gold coins. Well, how do I ascend? Is it in here? I'm just curious, how do I ascend this? Um, let me spin these coins, because I don't... Do I just blow it on the revival? No, I'm going to kind of spread it between Omni and Curse. Um, okay, let's leave Adventure. Let's come into Adventures. Okay, Ascend Adventure. I'm, I want to work through these. But I do want to just see what Ascending does. Ascending will reset all progress in this adventure. Are you sure you want to ascend this adventure? Cancel. So does that mean like new challenges and it's harder or it just resets it? Self-contain this game, disconnect and it's affected by progress. I might have to look online because I'm kind of curious. I don't want to ascend it and it just resets the adventure because I want to like get them finished through. Maybe maybe if I'm bored I can ascend them. I was hoping like ascending would add more challenging things to it or something like that. Anyway, if you made it this far and you agree or disagree with anything I said, leave a comment. I'm I'm always open to having a discussion. I don't I don't pretend to know everything. Um, and also, if you like what you saw here, please consider like, commenting, and subscribing. It helps out the channel greatly. I'm trying to grow it. We are up to 150 subscribers, which I know might not seem like much, but I think we are nearing like our one year anniversary where I start doing regular uploads and like. Just the difference, like in the past month, I've put on 50 new subscribers where like it took over a year to get those first 50 subscribers. So seriously, I, I'm, I'm, I cannot thank y'all enough. This has been a great experience. I hope to continue to grow the channel. That being said, have a good night. 
have a good evening. I hope to see you tomorrow. And have a good rest of your week if I don't see you before next weekend. Bye, everyone.